Good morning. For many people, the early childhood period, from about age two and a half, three to six, is considered the essence of childhood. Uh, children seem to come into focus in our lives as real people. Uh, they talk, they play, they have imaginations, and we relate to them in very different ways than we do to infants and toddlers. Over the next few weeks, you'll be reading about the physical, cognitive, and social emotional development of children between the ages of about three and six, and you'll read about the various experiences and interactions that help shape that uh, period of our lives for better or for worse. Uh, for me, the word to think of for this period of life is really one of integration. It's a time in which within each of the domains that you'll be reading about, uh, there's an integrating of different abilities and skills and tendencies that make us feel like we're seeing a whole person and a real person. And this kind of integration not only takes place within the domains, but between the domains as well. And it may have been a little bit easier to see that as infants move, they are also developing cognitively and emotionally. But the same thing, of course, is going on during this period of life. I'd like to focus a little bit this morning on the integration of systems in the uh, physical domain in early childhood, which is what you're reading about in this coming week. Uh, first of all, for example, underlying physical growth and abilities, again, is the growth and uh, changes that occur within the brain and nervous system. And there are dramatic changes that uh, lead to uh, better abilities to explore the world around you and to engage in it. For example, between the ages of three and six, uh, children gain nearly a foot of height and nearly double their weight. And in terms of the brain, you could say that uh, at age two or so, the brain is about 90, uh, excuse me, 70 percent of its adult weight. And by the time a child is five to six, it's between 90 and 95 percent of its adult weight. More than just the increase in weight of the brain is the linking up of parts of the brain with each other. For example, the cerebellum located in the back of the brain, in the hindbrain, helps to coordinate uh, uh, movement and balance. And over the period from three to six, uh, children develop dramatically better abilities to coordinate the sides of their body and to do so with more agility and balance. Uh, for instance, uh, children become able to uh, do things like ice skate or roller skate. Uh, activities that involve the left side of the body and the right side of the body moving in coordination, and along with that, of course, the left side and the right side of the brains controlling that. I'll give you a slightly different example. Um, lateralization of the brain becomes clearly evident in this period. Lateralization refers to uh, the fact that one part or side of the brain uh, coordinates functions more than the other. Uh, handedness would be a good example of this in which uh, those of us who are right-handed uh, have that coordinated by the left hemisphere of the brain. Uh, and about 90 percent of uh, children uh, become right-handed uh, in a more obvious way between the ages of three and six. You may see children at two and three preferring to hold a crayon in one hand, but truth be told, they don't actually draw any better whether the crayon is in the right hand or the left. But by age six, you'll see clear differences in not just hand preferences, but the use of crayons and pencils, uh, the accuracy of drawing, for instance, or writing for that matter. Uh, about 10 percent of children become clearly left-handed, uh, that is controlled by the right hemisphere of the brain in their um, fine motor um, movements related to drawing and writing. Uh, another example uh, would be in terms of language functions. Uh, in oh, 95 to 98 percent of children, uh, language functions are very clearly controlled in the left hemisphere of the brain. And, uh, one of the results of that is that children not only develop uh, vocabulary quantitatively, uh, which we'll talk about later in this course, uh, 
it's not just the size of their vocabulary that increases, but also the um, ability to uh, speak in grammatically complex ways. If you were to sit down and watch, say, a four-year-old or a five-year-old child and literally count the number of words per sentence, you would notice that by age five and six, they're speaking in sentences that approximate adult speech. Uh, they're using compound sentences, uh, adjectives, adverbs, prepositions, different tenses. And so if you're talking with a five or six year old child, you treat them as another person. You don't treat them as a little kid or uh, a, a toddler whose uh, vocabulary you can hardly understand. By age six, this language mastery, which is cognitive as we'll describe it in a week, uh, is founded upon the increasing lateralization, particularly in the left hemisphere of the brain. And related to that, of course, uh, perhaps an obvious example, but the ability to integrate the brain, uh, particularly uh, as an area called the corpus callosum develops. Uh, the corpus callosum is the part of the brain that connects the left and right hemisphere to each other. And as the corpus callosum thickens, it allows for better transfer of information between the hemispheres. So for example, uh, that incredible or remarkable leap that children make around age six, uh, sometime between five and seven, in which they begin to recognize uh, written language, uh, to recognize that a visual symbol represents the words they've been speaking. And as a result, they're able to read. This is, um, uh, promoted and carried out by the ability of the left hemisphere of the brain, which is more productively verbal, uh, with the right hemisphere, which is more visual spatial, to integrate each other so that children recognize symbols and realize that they stand for certain sounds that can be made vocally. When you look at first graders, uh, for example, around age six or second graders, the speed with which they master the fundamentals of reading is really remarkable. Now, none of this happens overnight. Uh, some of you in your uh, discussion boards have talked about reading to children and talking to children. And certainly parents who read to their children during the ages of three to six and children who see their parents read are more likely to uh, engage in reading themselves for pleasure and more quickly see the connection between symbol and sound. But even a four-year-old, uh, well before they're able to read, uh, may be found turning the pages of a book uh, that they've memorized and uh, reading along, in quotes, reading along with the pictured story that they're seeing. Integration of uh, brain functions between the hemispheres, uh, between the cortex and the corpus callosum, and even uh, between uh, lower brainstem areas allows for the child's um, rhythms and body uh, to be much more coordinated. I'll give you one other example, again, a slightly different area. Uh, children's uh, bodies uh, become more regularized uh, during early childhood. The amount of sleep they need decreases a bit, but they still need uh, a good 10 to 12 hours of sleep a night. And when they're awake and have uh, had good night's sleep, their ability to pay attention improves a lot as well. Attention is another one of those cognitive capacities we'll talk about. But underlying the abilities of attention, for instance, are the uh, increasing it, um, integration of areas of the brainstem, like the reticular formation that uh, regulates alertness, or the ability to uh, shift attention between several different activities uh, and not be so distracted. Uh, if you watch a child play a game like uh, Simon Says, for example, which we see them moving their bodies according to what uh, the instructions of Simon says or not that they're told. Keep in mind that they have to be aware of and pay attention to that cue, Simon says, to determine whether they should make a move or not. And the ability of language to mediate behavior, that is to uh, inhibit a behavior or prevent something that you don't want to happen, or to give direction so that children will be able to follow a set of instructions. That kind of integration between language or cognition and uh, body movements also improves during the period from ages three to six. Well, 
There are lots of other kinds of changes that you're going to be reading about in your chapter. Everything from uh, uh, body temperature and organ systems becoming more fully functional to uh, uh, you know, the ending of bedwetting or the growing of teeth, uh, the shedding of baby teeth and the beginning of um, uh, permanent adult teeth. But I'll leave that to you. Uh, for now, uh, focus as you're reading on how the brain and nervous system change and think if you can about how changes in the cortex, uh, the cerebellum, the brain stem, and even the emotional parts of the brain, the uh, amygdala which balances out uh, anger for example, or the hypothalamus that regulates motivation and drive, how these systems not only become uh, quicker and better able to function, but connect their activity with other parts of the brain. Uh, it's a very good place to start when trying to understand how children come into focus for us so dramatically in this period of life. I'll talk to you next week after the election. Take care.